on quick job. President, please be seated. President, please be seated. And today the chamber will hear the testimonies La chambre aujourd'hui va entendre of two TCW nine three two. Ms. Sakovati, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Greffier, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunchia is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the Grevier. A witness who is to testify today, that is 2 TCW 932, confirms that to his best knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is Nunjia and Kyozen Pon, or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness took an oath before the Iron Club statute in the morning of 11 June 2015, and uh, is waiting to be called by the chamber in the waiting room. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you, Ms. Sackerberty. The chamber now decides on the request, but first, uh, the chamber would like to inform parties that this afternoon, Judge Ayudra, the national judge, is absent because of his health. He is not able to be here, and after the deliberation among judges, the chamber decides to assign a Judge Atumani to replace Judge Ayudra until he is back with us. The decision is made based on the Internal Rule 79.4 of the ECCC. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nguyen Chia. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nguyen Chia dated 12 of June 2015, which states that due to his health, there is headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the, the 12th of June 2015 hearing. He advised that his counsel advise him about the consequence of uh, this waiver. Having seen the medical report of the Nguyen Chia by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 12 of June 2015, who notes that Nguyen Chia has a chronic back pain when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 81.5, of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nunchi his request to follow today's proceeding remotely from the holding cell downstairs via an audiovisual means. Every technician are instructed to link the audiovisual system so that uh, Nunchi can uh, participate remotely from the whole link cell downstairs. Court officer, please usher the witness into the courtroom.
Sustrai lok sa sai talo Good afternoon Mr Winnes what is your name Bonjour quel est votre nom Winnes My name is Kyle Lua Je me nomme Kyle President Lua. thank you Mr Kyle Lua when were you born Quelle est votre date de naissance Answer I was born on 15 of September 1951. President, thank you, Mr. Kyle Lua. Where were you born? Answer. I was born in Roniam village, Minje sub district, Sundan district, Kampung Tom province. Question. Where are you living currently? Où habitez-vous à l'heure actuelle? My current address is in Jampal village, Minje sub district, Sandan district, Kampung Tom province. President, thank you. What is your occupation? Answer. I am a rice farmer. Je cultive du riz. Question. Question. What are your parents' names? Quels sont les noms de vos parents? Answer. My father's Réponse. name is Kao Liang and my mother's name is Sao Son. Son. President, what President. about your wife? Quand what is her name? How many children do you have together? Combien d'enfants avez-vous ensemble? My wife's name is Soksare. We have eight children together. President. Thank you, Mr. Kaulu. The Grefje made an oral report that, to your best knowledge, none of your father, mother, ascendant children, or descendant of brother, sister, and in-law has no relation with uh, the two accused or to any party of uh, K0202. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. President, and also, President, the chamber is informed that you have already taken an oath uh, before you present in this courtroom. Is that true? Winner. Yes, I have uh, taken a note already. Effet, President, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kao Lua. The Chamber would like to La inform you of your rights and obligation as a witness. Your rights. As a witness, Mr. Kao Lu, in the proceedings before Mr. the Chamber, you may refuse to respond to any question or to make any comment which may incriminate you. Rise against self-incrimination. Your obligation as a witness in the proceedings before the chamber, you must uh, respond to any questions by the bench or relevant parties, except where your response or comment to those questions may incriminate you as the chamber has just informed you of your right as a witness. As a witness, you must tell the truth that you have known, heard, seen, remembered, experienced, or observed directly about an event or occurrence relevant to the questions that the bench or parties pose to you. Mr. Kao Lu, have you ever provided statement to the investigator of the OCIJ? If so, how many times have you given your statement? Answer. I have been interviewed 
However, I do not recall when it happened. President, no problem, Mr. Kaolu. Before you are here, have you reviewed the statement you gave to the investigator of the ECCC already? Answer. I read it twice, but I could not recall everything in it. President, to your best knowledge, could you confirm whether the statement you have just read twice reflects of what you stated at that time? Correspond à ce que vous avez dit aux enquêteurs à l'époque. Answer yes, it reflects what I have stated. Oui, cela reflète ce que j'ai dit. President, thank you Président, very much. In accordance with Internal Rule 91 bis of the ECCC, the floor is given first to the co-prosecutor to put questions before other parties. The combined time for the co-prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers is three sessions for this witness. You may now proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. President, judges and uh, counsel. Uh, good afternoon, witness. I'm from the prosecution. I'll ask you a few questions about uh, your experiences during the Khmer Rouge period. And of course, a lot happened during that time, but I'd like to concentrate uh, particularly on your experiences at the Kampong Chenang airfield, which you describe in your statement. I would also like to discuss with you what happened to many members of uh, Division 310, uh, to which you belong. But before we, before we do that, I'd like to um, put some short questions to you um, as to your, your background and the context in which um, you experienced the Khmer Rouge period. Your Honour, these, uh, these questions are largely derived from uh, a DC CAM statement, which is about 50 pages. Uh, the E3 number is 5658. And uh, I will just put these questions briefly and shortly. And uh, if the if the ERN numbers are required, I can provide them before we get to the topic of Camp uh, Mr. Witness, you told investigators on the, that on the 18th of September uh, 1970, um, when you were 18 years old, you joined uh, Pol Pot's revolution. Is that correct? Witness, yes, that is correct. Oui, c'est exact. Also, <laughs> also, you told uh, an interviewer fr même, from the Documentation Centre of uh, DC CAM that in 1971 uh, you got malaria and you briefly returned home to recuperate before returning to the front with Division 310, Battalion 317. And then you were armed and told to stand by in Kampong Tom, uh, Kampong Spao area. Is that correct? Answer. I would like to give my response as follows. In 1971, I got a malaria and I came back home, as you said. Thank you. And then, after you became well again, did you do join Division uh, 310, Battalion 317?
Yes, I joined uh, that unit. And then, um, is it correct that in 1974 uh, you were involved uh, in fighting with uh, Lon Nol troops? And at one point in 1974, on the 5th of December, you were promoted to deputy chairman of the battalion uh, while you were in Roulos. Answer, yes, that is true. And is it also true that in 1975, when you were involved in fighting in Phnom Penh, um, you were hit in the leg and uh, your leg broke, and then you had to go to hospital, is that correct? Answer. On the 1st of January, I was in the battlefield and uh, I was hit in the leg. I was hospitalized at that time. Thank you. And was that the 1st of January 1975? Answer. It was on the 1st of January 1975. Thank you. And then, were you uh, sent to the K4 unit uh, for recovery near the Calmet Hospital for that injury? des suites de ces blessures, de cette blessure. Madman. Answer, yes. Réponse, oui. And how long were you in recovery for combien de temps in K4? Answer, I could not recall it. Was it for a few weeks or was it uh, for some months or a year? Um, can you give us a, an estimate of the time frame? Answer. From my estimate, it was about three months that I could recover it. And can you tell the court what the unit K4 was? What, what was its purpose? And what types of people uh, became members or joined unit K4? I would like to clarify for the chamber. K4 was the unit for the handicapped. There were about 600 people in that unit. Uh, and when you say uh, handicapped, are you talking about people um, or soldiers that uh, became injured and uh, are recuperating, or are you talking about people that are permanently handicapped, have a problem with their arms or legs or something else on a permanent basis? K4 was uh, for the K4. handicapped soldiers. 
and uh, the handicapped soldiers were put in that uh, K4 unit. And perhaps just one more question on this. What types of handicaps uh, did you see in the, in the K4 unit? What types of problems did people have? De quel type de problème les soldats souffraient-ils? In the, that uh, K4 unit, as I stated, some uh, had uh, their legs and uh, arms uh, broken and some uh, were blind because of uh, the, that injury. And as I stated, uh, some soldiers were handicapped in leg and arms or they uh, were blind because of the injuries. And your injury, uh, the broken leg, was that a permanent injury? Did that um, stay with you uh, throughout the Khmer Rouge period? Or did it mend and, and get better quite quickly? Est-ce que vous avez pu récupérer, est-ce que vous avez pu guérir de cette blessure? Answer. Réponse. I am permanently uh, handicapped. I could walk, but I, à vie. I uh, could not do any carrying work. Mais je ne pouvais pas transporter quoi que ce soit. Thank you. Um, and is it correct Question. that in 1976 uh, you were still a part of uh, Unit K4 and uh, you became the, a company chairman in that unit? Answer. Man. Yes, that is true. And then, sometime in 1976, you've stated that you were arrested and taken to Kamon Kop Sarao for tempering because you were a cadre from the north side. Is that correct? Answer. When the members of regiment and uh, division and some other units uh, were arrested, I was sent uh, to Cops Road for tempering. And do you know why these other members from the north zone were arrested? Did you know why back then? Answer. As for the arrest, uh, the senior people, I have no idea. And then, did you tell the uh, interviewer that you spoke to that during 1977 there was a, a purge of Division 310 superiors? They were arrested. And because of that, you became the deputy chairman of the regiment in Unit K4. Is that correct? Yes, exact. Answer. After the purge of uh, cadres, I was in charge 
temporarily of été responsable uh, a battalion in uh, unit K4. Dans unité K4. And you said that um, because of these arrests, uh, you were sent to come on Cop Sarai for tempering. What did that mean? Answer. I was sent to Kapsra into another unit. That unit uh, was uh, for people who were there to be tempered. And the unit uh, number was uh, 317. And why were you um, tempered? You said there were arrests in the north zone, arrests of other people, and because of that you were tempered. What was your relationship with uh, people that were arrested, if anything? The reason I was sent for tempering uh, because I was accused of uh, being in the, the enemy unit. I was accused of uh, being an enemy at that time. And uh, were you an enemy to the to the Khmer Rouge, to the party? L'ennemi du parti, l'ennemi des Khmer Rouges. Answer. I have no idea about this matter. I uh, only knew that I was called for tempering. I was, it was said that I was an uh, old cadre. And were you a member of the Question. Communist Party? Étiez-vous membre du Parti communiste? Of Campuchia? Du Campuchia. Chambat. Answer. Réponse. I was not uh, the member of the uh, Communist Party Je of Cambodia. And you also Question. have told investigators and the Vous interviewer that in uh, 1977, after the arrest of North Zone leaders Division 310, because of links with CIA, uh, leaders from the southwest zone were put in place of the north zone, and you were sent to Kampong Chnang Airfield. Is that correct? I was tempered uh, in Khmuen for five months, after which I was sent to Kampong uh, Chnang Airfield. Thank you. I think you said um, in 1976, uh, you were sent to come on Kop uh, Sarai, and then you've also uh, said to an interviewer that on the 15th of January 1978, uh, you were sent to the Camp on Chenang airfield. The question uh, I'm asking you is that 
you gave the date of the 15th of January 1978 to this interview, interviewer from DC Cam, and I know it was 10 years ago, but how, why do you remember that you were sent to Camp Onchenang on the 15th of January 1978? On the 15th January 1978, I was assigned to work at the Airfield work site. On m'a envoyé travailler sur le site de l'aéroport de and uh, how are you able to remember that date specifically? Comment, comment pu vous souvenir de cette date précisément? I remember it uh, after I have uh, read the date uh, several times, and this is uh, one of the dates that date I cannot forget in my life. Ne de ma vie. Thank you. Um, you said that uh, you were sent to uh, Canon, com Merci. Uh, Camon uh, Copsarai for tempering. Is tempering punishment? Was it punishment? Rééduquer, était-ce une sanction, était-ce provisoire Allow me to respond Réponse. to your uh, question in this regard. People who were sent to the uh, location to were Les being tempered. The bell was rang at 3 p.m. and we had to wake up and we had to start uh, working early. We only have a short break during lunch time. And then we had to continue working through the day. And at night time, we had to continue working until 10 p.m. So uh, is it fair to say that when you were tempered, you had to work a lot harder than everyone else. In the regiment 317, all the soldiers in that regiment were being tampered. Tous les soldats devaient être forgés. And was that before Question. you got to Kampong Chenang Airfield? Um, the, re the whole regiment was being tampered before you arrived. Avant que le regiment devait être forgé. Not the entire regiment uh, was Réponse. sent there. However, Ce only uh, some soldiers from this regiment uh, were sent to Kampong Chenang Airport work site, while other soldiers were sent from other units. And just so that um, I'm clear, um, did you say that in 1977 uh, you became the deputy chairman of the regiment of K4 because of the purges? Is that correct? After they conducted the purge of cadres, I was appointed as a provisional deputy commander of battalion K4, not a regiment K4. Thank you. And you said that you arrived at Kampong Chenang, uh, was sent there on the 15th of January 
1978. Did you stay at the Camp Chenang Airport until the Vietnamese arrived in Phnom Penh? Did you stay there for the whole year? I remained for a full year at Kampong Chenang, and I fled on the 7th January 1979. Thank you. Question. But, uh, however, during that year, were you asked to do a course in Phnom Penh on land surveying? And then did you return to Camp Chenang during that year? While I was working at the Kampong Chenang airfield, they screened people to find those who were a bit more educated Ils so they could be sent for a training and after the training they would be sent back to work at the Kampong Chenang airfield. And is it correct that that training was for about three months. Est -il exact que cette formation devait durer trois à quatre mois? Yes, it is correct. The training lasted for about three months. Oui, c'est exact. La formation a duré environ trois mois. And what were you trained to do? Et en quoi consistait cette formation? Qu'avez-vous appris à faire au cours de cette formation? During the three month period, I studied the technical aspect of terrain surveying. And you said to the interviewer um, that uh, you're at Camp on Chenang airfield for about two months after the 15th of January 1978 and then you returned to Phnom Penh to study for three months and then you returned to the airfield for the remainder of that year until um, you fled on the 7th of January 1979. Is that an accurate account of what you did that year. Yes. Réponse. What I uh, said at that time is an accurate oui, account of what happened. Thank you. I'd like to ask you some questions about Merci, the numbers of people that were at the airfield, uh, the conditions that you and they had to work under, and whether any of that arrest activity that you talked about that was occurring at Kamon Kop Sarai was occurring, but I'll ask you some questions about that in a minute. My question is, why were you um, selected to do that course um, when you were being tempered and punished? I was being tempered at Copsro, and I had to work uh, despite my disability. I had to carry 
the sword and sometimes I fell off and felt unconscious uh, for a few times. Later on, I was sent to work at the Kampong Chinang airfield and the work there was less intensive than the work at the Khmu in Yakobsro since I was uh, instructed to pull a grass uh, from the uh, land. And who approached you um, to um, ask you or tell you to do the training in Phnom Penh? How did that come up? At that time, I met Réponse. Brother Han, à rencontré le camada who was a former soldier in arms with me while we were at the front battlefield. He then made a request for me to attend uh, the training. Lui qui avait à ce que je cette Thank you. Question, merci. I think. Uh, you did very well in that course, is that correct? You were second um, in the class. Yes, that is correct. You said that, well, perhaps um, one last question on this topic. Uh, you said that you were a deputy battalion commander on a temporary basis for Unit K4. Did you still have that rank when you went to Kampong Chenang? Were you still viewed as a deputy commander or not? Well, I was transferred to Kampong Chenang. Every one of us from the unit was simply considered combatants. I was not considered a deputy commander anymore. Were you allowed to carry a gun? At the Kampong Chenang, none of us was allowed to carry any weapon. And do you know why not? I did not know the the regulation at the work site. However, we were not allowed to have any weapon with us. The only thing that we had was a earth carrying pole and earth carrying basket. If I can read to you what you said to the ECC investigator. Uh, a number of years ago, and it's at E3467, ERN English 00205074, Khmer 0017-0620, and French 0020-5078. And this is what you said in response to a, this question. When they sent you for tempering in Camp on Chenang, what did they have you do? And you said, my unit had just 400 persons remaining at that time when they took us for tempering at Camp on Chenang. There were other units as well, like the 450th Division, but they did not let us meet. Initially, they had me pull grass on the airfield, working from 4 in the morning and until 11, 
and from 11:30 until 11 at night. At meetings, they said we had to be tempered because our leaders had been traitors. And if we were not tempered, then they would arrest us too. Talavai from the northwest zone was the person in control at the airfield. At that location, I saw people die from overwork and starvation. Trucks came to arrest people every night, arresting about 20 each time. At meetings, they called out names for people to leave the meeting and to be arrested at once. Of my unit, only 14 remain alive. Is that a true account of what happened at Camp Chenang Airport for that year you were there, apart from your training? Yes, that is the a true account of what Réponse. happened at the time. Oui, cela reflète bien ce qui s'est passé à l'époque. You said that Question. Uh, your unit was 400 vous dites que votre when you went to the airfield, and then you said, of my unit, only 14 remained Et alive. Vous avez dit que seul Are you saying that 386 Cela veut -il dire que members of Unit K4 did not remain alive pas survécu at the end of your time at Camp Hong Chenang, or are you just referring to the present day? De ce -là, ou du President, President, witness, please hold Monsieur on, Témoin, and Councillor Consum On, you have the floor. Consum On, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to object the question by the Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Co In the statement by the witness, Dans le procès verbal du témoin, he mentioned that not all soldiers in his unit were sent to Kampong Chenang as other soldiers were sent from other units. So it has to be clarified whether his unit contained only 400 persons and they were all sent to Kampong Chenang airfield. Yes, I think that's a, a good clarification. Oui, je pense que ce serait une, un excellent exercice. Uh, witness, Monsieur le témoin, when you went to the airfield, lorsque vous êtes arrivé did sur all 400 from your unit go, or did si some stay behind? Est-ce que vous accompagnez 400 membres de votre unité, ou certains sont-ils restés derrière vous? Ou avez-vous laissé certaines personnes derrière vous? When we went to Kampong Chenang, not all the soldiers uh, from our unit uh, went there, and de some other soldiers were brought in from other uh, units, Chenang. and we Certains went uh, together there. Unités. Thank you. Question About merci. how many soldiers from your unit uh, went to Kampong Chenang with you? I cannot recall the, how many soldiers from my unit went. Je ne me souviens pas combien de soldats de mon unité sont allés à Kampong Chenang. You said that uh, Question. of my unit only 14 remained alive. Did you, of the people that you went with from unit K4, did any of them 
disappear or were arrested um, during that year period. While I was at Kampong Chnam, there were successive arrests of those soldiers who were accused of being enemies. When you say successive arrests, were they arrests from uh, your unit or were they arrests from other units that were working at the site as well? Not only soldiers from my unit were arrested, soldier in, soldiers in other units were also arrested. Were you allowed to leave the work site if you wanted to? We were not uh, allowed Réponse. to walk freely here or there. We had to be stationed or stay put in one place. Were you allowed to Question. refuse to do the work? At that time, Réponse. we could not refuse to work. Even if we were sick, we had to, to work. Otherwise, we would be accused of being enemy. Sinon, so we had to bear the work. Il donc Did you get paid for the work? Question. Étiez-vous rémunéré pour le travail effectué? No, of course you didn't uh, get any wage non. from the work there, and you can forget about that, as the food there rémunéré. was not even sufficient. La même pas Did you get any days off to rest? Question. Did you get holidays, que vous avez or a day des off, vacances, or des jours de once repos, a week, or once a month, de, de or congé, twice a week? Par semaine, deux fois par semaine, une fois par mois. There was no Thursday or no Réponse. Sunday or no weekend. We worked jeudi, every single day of a month. Weekend. If you were so tired and you wanted to sleep in and not go to work that day, could you do that? Of course not. We Réponse, could not do that. As I told you earlier, that Comme if we dit, did not go to work, si we would be accused, accused of being enemy. We would be accused of uh, being or, or pretending to be sick of a tremor or of a tractor. That was the slogan they used at the time. Just talking about the members of your unit, K4, you said that members had some sort of disability. Were any of those uh, members allowed to undertake combat operations because of their um, poor health or their disability?
please uh, repeat your question. Were the people in your unit, were they fit for combat operations? The incapacitated soldiers were divided into Les two groups. For those who are combat competent, will be sent uh, to fight. But I was in the second group that we were not combat competent, so we were sent to work at the airfield. Did you wear a military uniform? Question or other members in your unit? Please repeat your question again as I do Réponse. not fully get it. Vous répéter, vous plaît? Je pas très bien Did you wear a, a military uniform? Que vous un uniforme militaire? When you were at Camp Pongchenang. Lorsque vous étiez à Camp Pongchenang. In Kapongchenang uh, airfield, we mostly wore black uh, clothing. La plupart d'entre nous portaient des vêtements noirs. And was that black clothing Question. considered to be military uniform? Ces vêtements noirs étaient-ils considérés comme étant un uniforme militaire? No, it was not. A military uniform, but Réponse. every one of non, us was instructed to wear black clothes. Nous avions tous reçu de des Only the noirs. soldiers at the front of the field wore military uniforms. Un uniforme so you wore your uniform military So you didn't wear a uniform. Vous ne donc pas you didn't have a gun. Vous pas you couldn't fight in combat. Pas apte au combat. What, what made you a soldier at Camp Pongchenang Airfield? Pour raison, alors, -vous comme Why do you say you were a soldier? Sur ce -vous que vous étiez soldat? While I worked at the Kampong Chinang Airfield, Réponse. we were given uh, clothes to wear, je me suis vu but des it was not a, a military uniform, Il ne it was pas a black clothes. Il de vêtements noirs. Thank you. Question. Merci. You talked. You talked about how much you had to work. Vous avez dit and you said, I'm, and I'm just re-quoting, you were working from 4 in the morning si until 11, from 11.30 until 11 at night. At that location, you saw people die from vous overwork and starvation. When I read what you have to say, that means that at times you were working for 18 si hours a day dit, at the airfield. Is that, is that correct? Exact? As a soldier who was sensed to be Tempered réponse. there, that was the soldat, reality on the ground. Voilà ce que vécu sur le la and perhaps when we uh, answer some of these questions, uh, I will sometimes ask you which time period 
Parfois, je me demande à quelle période cela s'est passé. Vous avez dit à la Cour que vous étiez à Camp Phnom Penh, Airfield, pour quelques mois, et ensuite vous étiez à Phnom Penh pendant quelques mois, et ensuite vous étiez à Phnom Penh pendant trois mois avant de revenir pour les derniers cinq ou six mois. Pendant les cinq ou six mois, en termes de travail, ont-ils resté les mêmes depuis que vous étiez à Phnom Penh pendant les deux premiers mois Ou est-ce que les heures de travail ont changé pendant les deux premiers mois Or did they change after you got back from the training? Did it get harder? Did it get easier? Or did it stay the same? Answer. I would like to inform the court that during that two-month period of time, I was being tempered, and after I returned from that tempering unit, I was assigned to be in charge of measuring the land. So my work was a bit, you know, less difficult. So your your status at the airfield um, improved because of the training that you received. Is that correct? Donc votre statut s'est amélioré grâce à la formation Answer. que vous avez reçue au préalable. Yes. And when I went to work and to measure the land, usually they use a steam roller or compact, so I compacted to assist the workers. So the work was less difficult. Whilst you were were there, and and. When you got back from your training and your status improved uh, somewhat, did those conditions still apply to the, the working conditions, the hours that people had to work? Did they still apply to other people from your unit or other people that you saw? I would like to inform the chamber that during that time I parted my friends and colleagues. They stayed in their respective units. They had regular working hours starting from 7 until 11 a.m. in the morning and they resumed work from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Et se prolongeait jusqu'à 17 heures. So, when you got back uh, from the training and was at the airfield, did your did your hours uh, improve? Did they change from uh, four o'clock in the morning to late at night? Did you go to more regular hours, or did other people have more regular hours? se poursuivait jusqu'à tard dans la nuit. Et qu'en était-il des autres personnes Avaient-ils des horaires plus réguliers Technicians' units and for other colleagues, they were in different units. So I lost contact with all my colleagues. Thank you. You said that you saw people die from overwork. Can you explain what you saw? Answer. I would like to inform the chamber that some people who were carrying earth 
and uh, who were digging terre, the earth uh, terre, le sol, failed and became unconscious and uh, many of them uh, died because of uh, their work and because uh, the, of the fact that they were too fatigued. You also, you also have said that uh, people at the airfield um, died of starvation. I would like to talk to you about how much food people were receiving. In that first two months, before you went to training, what did you get to eat? We had a meal, but it was not enough. Do you remember the uh, number of meals that you got before you went to your training? From Answer. Réponse. I could not recall it. Je ne m'en souviens pas. When you when you say that people had insufficient food, lorsque vous dites que les gens n'avaient pas suffisamment, did they have meat? Did they have vegetables? Did they have rice? Or did they have something something different? Ou avait-il autre chose? Soup. Soup. Answer. Réponse. There was no soup, and uh, we had a sour soup, uh, soup in the morning and in the afternoon. We had uh, only little uh, meat uh, and fish. Nous avions peu de poisson et de viande. Where did the where did the workers at the airfield sleep? Particularly when you first arrived, where were they sleeping? Answer. I, I did not know that uh, village, uh, the uh, old uh, village uh, which uh, village, people deserted it. I did not know where it was, Je ne pas où il se but trouvait. I knew that it was close Mais to the airfield. Je il était de when airfield. you first arrived in uh, January 1978, can you approximate how many people were working at the airfield? Answer. I could not give uh, my estimate. I saw many, many people, and they had a different work to do. If we, um, if I put to you some uh, numbers, fifty, five hundred. 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. Do any of those numbers approximate to what you think might have been the number of workers at the airfield? Answer. From Réponse. my estimates, uh, there were about 500 uh, workers there. J'estime qu'il y avait à peu près 500 travailleurs. 
President, it is now convenient time for a short break, and the chamber will take a break from now until 3 p.m. Call officers, please oh, find a proper room for this witness during this short break. And please in, invite him back into the courtroom at 3 p.m. The court is now in recess. Sure.